Hello, my name is Scott Cameron. I recently graduated from a BA in Graphic Design at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. Throughout my course, I've always had a strong passion for typography, which is what led me to the letterpress workshops. From the workshops, I quickly realised how much I enjoyed preparing and inking the type to create my own designs. After using digital printers for so long, it was so nice to step away from the screen and go back to basics. I love how all my prints were unique, each with their own character. However, my time at the workshops was cut quite cruelly short due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The lockdown hit, the university was closed and all the workshops were cancelled. Determined to continue my new passion, I purchased an antique proofing press and continued to learn the process at home using metal and wood type that I purchased online. I found that especially in wood, a lot of the type that is listed online is just more of the same, with the more exotic types split up and hung on someone's wall or just sold separately on sites like Etsy. I So I started to research the equipment that I would need to create my own wood type. I bought a large CNC machine, which I then assembled from nearly 1,000 parts, and I housed it on top of a table tennis table, which I used for a desk. After several months of learning, calibrating, fine-tuning, I decided to rent out my own space, in which I could be as loud as I want. And believe me, the machine is very loud. At this point, I reached out to Eric Speakerman. I was wanting to make some of his typefaces into wood type. After a few messages back and forth, I was then shocked to hear he was looking to have some wood type made, and if I would be up for the task. To not seem overly keen, I waited a good two minutes before saying yes. I did offer the wood type for free because it was early days and it was the criticism that I was after, but Eric insisted he would be paying nonetheless. And as you can imagine, I did not dispute that. The type was then shipped from Swansea to Berlin, missing the new Brexit charges by just a few days. Eric promptly got back to me with some great feedback. Some of the letters weren't perfectly square or the same tallness, which made them a pain to squeeze into the form. Eric also pointed out, as shown in the picture, that some of the type has wobbly lines. This turned out to be because of the root amount wasn't locked up tight enough. I have come to learn that there are so many small things like this that makes all the difference when making wood type. These issues have been addressed since then. But aside thanks to Eric for the first ever order, and it would have took me a lot longer to be where I am now without his in-depth feedback. I thought I would show a bit of the process. Before I get to this stage, all wood is tested for imperfections and its moisture content. If the moisture content is too high, the wood will warp. This bit of machinery is used for bringing the wood to type height for both Pika and D-Dot orders. Different grades of sandpaper are used on the drum throughout this process. The end grain wood is then fed through the drum multiple times turning the plank and checking the height using specialist gorges on every other pass. I have increased the video speed and only shown the last grade of sandpaper, as this part of the process is rather time consuming. When the wood is ready, it will be within 0.07 tolerance of the desired type height. The wood is then cored with a custom shellac mix for a shiny satin finish. The character as an ornament would have been made into a vector format and been imported into CAD and CAM. This software allows you to create designs and toolpaths for the stock to be milled. The toolpaths are optimised for efficiency, starting with this roughing pass. This larger tool lets you remove most of the material on the plank. Then the size of the mill bits are reduced significantly to get sharp internal external corners on letters such as M. After the milling is finished, the block is then cut out. This can be done in a range of different ways. But the most important thing is, is that it's cut out perfectly square. Many of the historic typefaces out there have letters prone to curling issues. Cutting slots into the problem letters means they can fit together with the right spacing. 
I have also taken into consideration the space that is left over. The space can be filled perfectly with Anglo spacers. For this one, 30 point spacers on either side returns the block to normal. Here are some examples of plank wood top reformica. I am constantly looking for ways to bring down the cost of wood type so more people can experience the wonders of the craft. Unfortunately, I have learned that changing materials won't drastically bring down the cost. It's how long it takes to make and the man hours spent that's the issue. Realistically, to bring down the cost, I would need multiple machines to bring down the manufacturing time. It's not cost effective to make full fonts before selling them. So I made some samples of ones that I like to advertise on my website. I reached out to David Jonathan Ross to see if I could make some of his typefaces and wood to sell. This is the first one called Fit. The idea behind the font is filling up space with maximum impact. This is another one by David. Manigotti is inspired by the boisterous wood types of the 19th century. Manigotti pushes the reverse stress French Claridon style to its decorative extreme. And lastly, Bungie, which celebrates urban signage. I decided to mill this one as a two-part chromatic. This typeface is designed by Kadek from Creative Media Lab. Django features a reverse contrast style with a retro and psychedelic look. I really enjoy new entries into the wood type world. There are so many lovely fonts out there waiting to be pressed. This is Dolores by Custom Type. The name of the typeface is inspired by the main character of a hit TV series called Westworld. Westworld is set in a futuristic western themed amusement park in which all the residents within the park are robots built by machines, a fitting name for a western style font made by a machine. This is a redraw by custom type of the classic wood type font, Corinthian. I first started with one layer as shown here being printed on an Adana. I then milled this as a three part chromatic and printed it on my Farley. One of my favourite typefaces, Banco, designed by Roger X. Coffon for the Olive Foundry in 1951. These are all redraws from a collaboration between myself and Custom Type. I found this little podgy fist on the anti mailer card. It had to be made into wood type. This is the second typeface I milled after Hamilton Arts. This is called Oh No Type Condensed by James Edmondson. I made this as a free A 12 line. This is a free A 16 line Claridon Light Condensed. Free A 16 line Tuscan X Condensed designed originally by William Page. Which brings us to the last full font I milled for the talented Morgan Van Tor. This was 220 characters in end grain beach. Morgan asked that I trim the characters all at 0mm for ultra tight kerning. Morgan requested for a typeface to be made at 12 Cicero. This meant that all letters with descenders were to be cut at 15 Cicero. This makes for easy form locking. Here is the full order. Some extras were added to the font by Morgan so that letters could be extended for more customization in her prints. She was kind enough to send over some of her pictures and videos of the wood type in action. And just a few things I'm up to currently. I've been collaborating quite a lot with custom type and we've been vectorizing a lot of borders from old catalogs. I'm also milling a custom order for Basuto. It's 16 line. Designed originally by Stanley Baxter for Stevenson Blake in 1927. And finally, thanks for watching and it's nice to virtually meet everyone. Thank you.